Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider. And today, we're going to take a magical little trip here into Google Earth and show how you can use Google Earth to plan out a photo trip to the point that you can predict where you're going to need to put your tripod at the exact time on the exact day that you're going to be in that location to shoot anything you want from sunsets even to the Milky Way. This is one heck of a tutorial, so strap yourselves in, get yourself some Google Earth, and let's go ahead and take a flight over to Cannon Beach, Oregon. So times have certainly changed since I used to plan my little photo excursions. What I used to do was go to Flickr or 500px, type the location of where I was going to go, look at other people's pictures, and try to find them on a map. And typically, um, I would I would be uh, I'd be pretty much lost. <laughs> there wasn't much that I could do there. But here in Google Earth Pro, we have 3D visuals of the entire world. I mean, this is this, this is a game changer for a photographer who's trying to plan a trip, especially because now I've already scouted all of the locations that I want to shoot here in Oregon. So here I am already at Oregon. I've uh, gone to several of the places that are on my pinpointed Google Earth map already because I already set forth and did the pre-planning ahead of time. So all I had to do is pack my bag, go to Oregon, check into my hotel, and start going to the points that I plotted. So there's a ton of stuff to uh, to try and show you here in Google Earth. And Google Earth uh, really has more than I can show you in a quick 10 to 15 minute how to plan a trip tutorial. So really, you kind of just have to download it, get into it, and just get your hands dirty with it. And I, I'll tell you, you can probably spend two, three, four, five, six hours just scouting the entire globe. And we aren't just talking America here. This is all over. The other day, I was looking at the Eiffel Tower. It's, it's, it's crazy. So over here on the left-hand side, you're going to see your typical Google search options. So here I could type something in and I could search it. Down here you're going to see different uh, places. Like if I've made a pinpoint on this map, which I'll show you how to do that, I can navigate to any one of those pinpoints at any time. And then on the lower level, you're going to see different layers. And we'll talk about those layers as we go through. At the top, you have your toolbar. This is where you can add things to your own personal Google map so that when you add a pin, you can always go back to that pin whenever you want. So we'll talk about the pins. We're going to be talking about the rulers, and we're also going to be talking about the daytime, nighttime camera. So let's go ahead and go to Cannon Beach, Oregon, because that's where we are. Cannon Beach, Oregon. It already starts popping up. So if I press OK and go to search, it's going to go ahead and magically navigate me right down into Cannon Beach, Oregon. Now we can see right here, just from a bird's eye topographical view, all of the different places here. So we talked about those layers. On the left hand side, if we want to remove any of those places, uh, objects, and things like hotel rooms, uh, we could take away that places option. We could also, if we wanted to, take away the photos, but here we are as photographers wanting to see what other photographers have taken of this area. So if I zoom in close here and go to where we have Haystack Rock, you can see that this coast is littered with pictures. So I can click here and say, oh, that's what Haystack Rock looks like at sunset because somebody's already taken that picture. So now I can already start to plan where I want to set myself up when I go out for my trip. So we can we can take away the photos if we want to take away any distractions, and we can also take away any borders and labels. And that'll take away any distractions. So if you want to look at Google Earth with a distraction-free environment, you could do it that way. Also, right here, if you take this hide sidebar, you're only going to see Google Earth taking up your entire screen, which is really awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that because we're going to need to use that. So one of the places that I wanted to visit was this place called the Devil's Cauldron, and it's not too far from Cannon Beach. It's pretty far, pretty south, about 10 miles south. So what I can actually do is go up here and type in uh, Devil's Cauldron, Oregon, and it will magically navigate me to the Devil's Cauldron in Oregon. And it really looks a lot farther away than what you're seeing. It was only about 10 miles or so. So here, if I want to see what other people have shot of this area, I'd click that photos option and see that what this area actually looks like. It looks like a pretty cool area for me to go ahead and photograph. We've got a lot of trees and some ocean, uh, more like a higher up view. I might not be able to get on the coast here, but at, at least I know that now going into this. 
So one of the things that I need to look for if I'm going to shoot Devil's Cauldron, and when I say shoot, I'm talking about photograph, is a place to park. So if I zoom in right down here, I can see that this is the place that I would want to park. So if I want to, I can grab a pin and add a place marker right here. And when I rename this place marker to park here, I know that I need to park here. Okay. And now I need to know just how far of a walk is it going to be for me to walk from this parking location to this area where I might be able to take a picture. So let me just go ahead up here to the ruler tool. You're going to see a ruler up here. And what this ruler is saying is, how do you want to do this? Do you want to make a line for, for our measurement or do you want to make a path? I want to make a path. So I'll click right here to where I'm going to park my car, hoping that I get the best parking spot in that area. And I'm just going to go ahead and start making uh, several points. And as you click, because we're on a path, it will just start creating these points for me as we go through. And right here, you can see that I want to do this by miles. You can do it by feet, miles, kilometers, uh, meters, however you want to do it. Oh, kilometers, kilometers. <laughs> All right, so we'll go to miles and I'll just go ahead and add another point here all the way until about here where I can walk. Now that's going to be a roundabout uh, type of estimate, I, but at least now I know that it, from the parking area to the vantage point that I want to photograph, it's going to be about a quarter of a mile. And I can go even farther than that and look at the elevation profile and see from which point the elevation is going to be as I'm walking along that path. So that's pretty cool. So I know that there's going to be a slight variation in elevation as I walk from the area of parking to the area that I want to photograph. So that is pretty incredible. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press uh, save and I'll save this as a uh, walking path to cauldron. Press OK. And now if I zoom in down here, I'm going to go ahead and make myself another place marker so that I know that this is going to be where to photo shoot one. So I know that that's going to be one of the places that I want to take my photo shoot at. So if I, by any stretch of how I'm navigating around Google Earth, I get lost. Let's say I just go back to Cannon Beach. It's going to take me magically wisping back to Cannon Beach. And here's Cannon Beach. If I needed to ever go back to that Devil's Cauldron area, I could just double click on one of these points and that, that point would show me how to get there. Now, I told you that was only about 10 miles to get to Devil's Cauldron from Cannon Beach. Let's go ahead and check it. We can get directions. So we'll go from Cannon Beach to Devil's. If I could spell, that'd be great. And we'll get directions. And now it's going to map out that entire path for me. So it looks like 10.8 miles from Cannon Beach all the way down to Devil's Cauldron. So I've already got that already mapped out. That's trip number one. Okay, so now let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's go ahead and cancel our search results here. If I wanted to, I could email this myself. I could print it. But we're just going to go ahead and cancel this for now. And let's make sure that terrain is selected. So it's very important to make sure that terrain is selected because now we're going to take a little cruise along the beach. So I'm going to zoom in down here and I've already scoped out this coast pretty well. So I know pretty much exactly where it is that I want to shoot. So I'm going to go and navigate up a little bit right here to where it says bird rocks, because this seems like a really interesting place to do sunset shoots either right here at bird rocks or maybe even sea lion rock. Let's look at bird rocks. So we'll zoom in down here. And as I zoom in, you see that the terrain starts to kind of develop as I zoom in. Now, if I press the control control key and then pull down on my mouse, it's like flying. So as I pull down on the mouse, it makes me look up. It's uh, I was never very good at that flying thing. So you can see here that now I can almost look at where I want my tripod to be. Now, if you press control and then move the wheel bar uh, on your mouse, move that little wheel. And as you move that down or up, it will rotate you and navigate you around the area. So I'm navigating around. And if I click and drag on the map, I can kind of grab and see where I want to be. Let's say I want to shoot this rock. All right. So I'm going to get in even closer. So I'm just going to release control and just zoom right on in here and then pull my, my view up. So now I can see the sky.
And why this is important is because I want to know kind of what this place is going to look like at certain times of the day. So what I can do is I can click right here where it says show sunlight across the landscape and use the time slider for the time of day. So right now it's defaulting to my time of day. So if I move this to the left a little bit, it'll show me kind of what the light is going to look like as I'm there on the scene, even to the point that I get shadows on the landscape. So if I want to plan out my shooting, my sunset, sunrise, and, and just daytime landscape shooting in general, I know for a fact that uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon might not be a very good time to shoot. And sure enough, the lighting isn't that great. But as I move this over, I can see what times of day start to look better as I navigate this over, even to the point that I'm seeing stars now. So let's take a look around because it looks like the Milky Way might be around here somewhere. So there's the Milky Way. There's a really small sliver of the Milky Way, and that's kind of like the faint part of the Milky Way. But if at, let's say, 8 or 9 o'clock I go out there, I'm, I can catch the very tail end of the Milky Way at this spot where that bird rock is. And I can even look around even more if I want to. I can look around the sky and see where the biggest portion of that Milky Way is going to be and at what time it's going to be. So if I'm you know, really interested in Milky Way shooting, which I am, I can actually navigate around here. I, I, I already know that it's going to be on this side, so that's why I kind of turn my, my perspective a little bit there. You, it, it moves very fast, so you kind of got to go a little slow with it. But at about, it looks like 1 a.m., 11.45, I might be able to catch more of it on this end. Let's see what happens if we navigate a little bit farther over in time. As we navigate that over in time, we get to see about where that's going to be. And this is my uh, time zone that I'm in now. So we're looking at the Milky Way along the coast at my time zone. That's 8.52 in the morning, which would actually be about 6.52 in the morning there. So maybe before the sun rises, I might be able to catch a little bit of that Milky Way right there on the shore. That is pretty awesome. Actually, I can't say shore. Shore is an East Coast thing. Sorry about that. That's my East Coast roots coming out. I never even liked the word shore. That was a Jersey thing. Sorry, Jersey people. Um, but you can see that you can actually plan out exactly where you want to place your tripod when you go to shoot. To me, this is absolutely incredible, especially because I'm going to be planning a trip. So let's just go ahead and uh, go back to one of those points. So now with the terrain selected here and we go back to our devil's cauldron you see how it navigated me there i can see exactly what this coastline looks like and how the coast is definitely going to be inaccessible for me because i'm not going to be spelunking or climbing any any cliffs i guess here going any cave diving or anything to try and get a good shot i'll leave that up to the crazy people um, i've got a wife and kids now but maybe i would be able to get a shot over here on this coast and again, I could find a road that would lead me to there and see just how far it would be to walk. And that that would be a good way to analyze how much gear I want to bring with me. How light do I want to pack? Is this going to be something that I can just park right there on the coast and walk to the coast and not have to walk too far with all my gear? Or am I going to need my hiking bag for this one? So we can zoom on out and see that that is Smuggler's Cove. And one of the best parts about this, not only can I plan my entire trip i can already see what other people have taken pictures of around this area so this is south arcadia beach i know that that's going to be a pretty cool point to take a picture i can just start plotting stuff here there and everywhere there's a coastal fall right here how would i have known that if i didn't click there so i'm actually going to make a point there i like that let's go ahead and make a point right here coastal we'll call it coastal waterfall The really cool thing about this is that it's satellite imagery. So if you get really bored, you can uh, find a car party like I found here. That and people are actually parked at their vehicles right here on the beach and are having themselves a nice little party on the beach with their cars and probably up to no good. But that's just the coast. One of the most amazing things about this is that I can go to places that I've never been before in my entire life, like the Grand Canyon. I know. I've never been there. I need to go there. Let's just go ahead and press uh, enter on finding the Grand Canyon. It's going to magically whisk me away to the Grand Canyon. And with terrain selected, I can be navigating inside the Grand Canyon. 
This to me is just absolutely incredible. I'm already there. I've never been there, but look at that. I'm navigating through the Grand Canyon. It gets even better. You can go anywhere you want. I'm going to go to my hometown here. Actually, it's not my hometown. It's just where I live. Kansas City, Missouri. Check that out. Imagine being magically whisked away, too. I don't know if I have any Wayne's World fans out there, but um, when I was younger, we lived in Illinois. Look at that. I'm in Kansas City right now. I'm looking at buildings that are in Kansas City as I drive through Kansas City. Even uh, buildings under construction. We've got a crane here. Look at that. That is absolutely phenomenal. Very cool. When I was younger, I lived in Illinois. And then we were told that we had to move to Delaware. And we watched Wayne's World. And there's a part in Wayne's World where they're like, imagine being magically whipped away to Delaware. And they're like, hi, we're in Delaware. Same thing. You can be magically whisked away to Delaware. And that's what I kind of consider home. That's where all my family is. So I could plan a nice little photo excursion trip to Delaware. There's probably not going to be any three-dimensional terrain because it's actually a rather flat state. Uh, it's got some stuff up north. So the next time you plan on taking yourself on a little photo excursion, I highly recommend taking a look at Google Earth first. And the reason being is because you can either plot out your entire trip or you can look at pictures that other people have taken for the exact location that you're going to be going to and kind of get an idea of what you want to shoot. It's absolutely incredible. We live in a time where anything is possible and we're seeing it here. We can three-dimensionally map out where we want to be, where we want to even place our tripod. Not even 10 years ago could we have done this, maybe 10 years ago. What it wouldn't have been this accurate 20 years ago, 30 years ago, wouldn't even been heard of. Again, my name is Blake Rudis of Everyday HDR and HDR Insider. And if you saw this helpful, go ahead and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comments section below. Have you used Google Earth to plan out a photo trip? How did it work out for you? Was it something that when you made the, the plans that it worked out to be pretty accurate to, to the location that you shot? I'm pretty curious because I still haven't been to all the places that I've mapped out yet on my trip to Oregon. We live in a really crazy time when pretty much anything is possible on the internet and this just goes to show you what we're capable of doing. So thanks for stopping by and have fun with Google Earth.